Hello, today we're going to present a live demo of Open Text Magellan in the best in class platforms for BI analytics and text analytics at the Forrester Data Strategy and Insights Conference in Austin, Texas. The data comes from Kaggle and includes wine reviews and includes a variety, the location, the winery, the price, the points, and an unstructured field uh, for description. So we're going to do this in three steps, data ingestion and natural language processing. Then we'll finally do some data modeling and basic analytics and then some advanced analytics. So we'll start with data ingestion and natural language processing. So we'll start in the Open Text Magellan Launchpad where I have several modules I have access to. We're going to first go into the BI and reporting module to import the data. All right, in here I can create a new data source. And data can come from virtually anywhere, big data sources, databases, text files. We're going to grab some text files from my desktop. So I've got a data source, a CSV file here. And this file contains 150,000 uh, rows of data. And we're going to import that in. And once the data is imported, we can start preparing this data as well. And we could change things like, uh, in this particular case, we want to add or change the data type. We can change it from string, say, to integer. So I can, I can join data in here. Uh, I can save it, um, uh, but bring in other CSV files. We're just going to call this one for data and save it. So once the data is saved, I can start creating a new report. So let's go back into our reporting module. And this time, create a new report. Reports need data, so it should prompt me to uh, add a data source here, and we'll grab the user data that I just created here called for data, and click OK. So I can pull this uh, data field over here one at a time, but for brevity, I'm just going to drag them all in. And you see this field here, description, is the one I'm really interested in. So lots of fields for price and everything. And this description here is where all my data is locked in. So this is whether or not they like the wine. This is how they characterize the wine. This is whether or not it was too acidic, too sweet. And all this is really locked up into a field that we really can't do much with. So uh, let's first uh, drag our ID off to the left. I want to use that um, as a hyperlink here in a moment. We'll take description field. And we don't actually need to see it. So let's hide this column. And this time I want to create a new hyperlink. So we'll say hyperlink. And hyperlinks are easy. Let's grab the URL here. And it sort of says text to analyze equals, and it's waiting for me to add something. So I'll add description to the end of that URL. Validate that it works, and click OK. All right, once my hyperlink is created, I can use that to pass the description onto our text mining engine. So I'll select one here, this wine from Spain. And out of the box, we can pass this data over and find out that we can detect the language out of here, in this case, English, the so subjectivity, so opinion, fact, and the overall document tone in this case was negative. So I also get a nice summary. Uh, I can pull the topics from here. So it found uh, various topics like eating and drinking in here. Uh, entities, if I found any, uh, concepts. So I found complex concepts, uh, offer notes, uh, baked berry, key flavor. It found simple concepts, flavor, tannic, palate as well. And it detected the sentiment. So it says 80% of this document is uh, uh, opinion, 20% fact, and 69% uh, neutral, some negative and some positive. So again, not real glowing negative or glowing positive. So say 39% negative is this bruiser, for instance. So this is out of the box. Now our data scientists did spend a little bit of time uh, adding uh, to an authority file or knowledge base. And by doing that, we have a separate category here called food and wine. And by simply analyzing this, I can now tell it's a sweet dessert wine. It has some food founds in here like chocolate, marzipans. It found some allergens like marzipan as well. Uh, wine descriptors, aromas, black colored, flavor, strength, finish. It found these descriptors in here. Any preparation methods it could also find as well. So again, this is out of the box. Uh, that uh, uh, transformation is done in the text mining annotation studio. This is where our data scientists spent about four hours or so uh, mucking with that uh, data. So we can also do uh, set up our own crawling jobs. So this is how we would uh, crawl multiple documents, not just one at a time. And in this case, we did crawl 150,000 uh, uh, documents. Uh, we can pull documents from uh, ECM. In this case, uh, we can pull it from a file system. We can pull it from uh, a database. We can pull it from uh, t uh, Twitter and as well as the web. So we can start and stop this job here. And we did crawl this job. So once we do crawl this, uh, we do have uh, the ability to now navigate that document by those features. All right, so we did crawl 150,000 documents here, and we got a dashboard that lets us explore that data. So we can uh, navigate the data by tone, uh, by category down here, uh, by concept as well. Uh, we can also look in the background here by entity. So it found the people or proper names uh, in this document. It found various places in this document, uh, different organizations in this document as well. If I look back here by concept, 
It found our simple concept, you see acidity in here, blackberries. It found our complex concepts, barrel sample, Asian pear, Asian spices. Uh, it found our categories, so we've got beverages, cherries, confections, eating and drinking. And finally again behind here, sentiment analysis. So it found 101 of these documents, 101,000 of these documents are positive. Overall, 22,000 neutral and 26,000 are, are negative. Of the positive ones, we can pull out, of course, some common words like this, but also great, price, excellent, value, best. We pull out the negative sentiment out of here as well. Smoky, dull, uh, you'll find some common words again like with in here as well. Sweet, sometimes in, in negative connotation can be too sweet. So this is a look at um, Open Text Magellan and text mining. And next we'll go into step two, data modeling metrics and some basic analytics. All right, for part two, we're also gonna start in the Open Text Magellan launch pad. And this time we're gonna go in the data discovery module. So data discovery is where our advanced analysis can be done. And we're going to start in the smart UI. So just like it sounds, it's smart. So I can take some of this data, uh, like country, and drag it over. And it'll help us decide uh, how to display that data. So uh, we've got all the countries a little difficult to read. So let's just say uh, pull, as a percentage, the top five. So if I go from uh, US down to Chile and simply pull all those in as a filter. So I can also pull over other values here. We'll drag in price. And price looks better uh, as a line without all those uh, muddy stuff under the bottom. I can pull in points, so if I drag points down here, I get a nice uh, distribution of points uh, as, as we see. But we also pull in uh, the sentiment for each document. So I know that my sentiment has a tone, negative, positive, and neutral. I can simply drag those over and get those displayed as well. So this dashboard can be shared and saved um, for, with others as well. But let's switch back to do a little more advanced analytics. All right, now that we're in our advanced interface, we can start look exploring this data. So let's say we'll just take this wine uh, table and explore the entire table. So I get a nice uh, uh, record view of all the data, but also quickly at advance, a glance, I get a summary. So I can look down, I can see there are 49 unique countries here. Uh, there are 632 unique varieties and 14,000 unique wineries. I can also sort this by nulls. So if I look at the uh, high percentage of nulls in region two, that's a field we likely not use since 59% of that is empty. I can look at discrete values. So 100% of IDs are expected to be discrete, but we can see 64% uh, of our descriptions are, are discrete as well. So that's a field that also should be 100. So that tells us there's probably some duplicate data. I can, I can explore individual fields. So if I look at country and then go to discrete values, we can very quickly sort and see that the top three countries, uh, US, Italy, and France, make up about 70% of that data. Uh, I can pull over points. So let's drag points and explore them and go to um, statistics and we'll see our um, our points arrange from uh, 80 to 100 and with a uh, mean or median of, of about 88 and I could do the same for price so let's export price we'll get the statistics and see that uh, our price ranges from four dollars to twenty three hundred dollars with a mean of, of 33 and a median of 24. so there are some nulls in this data set, so let's go ahead and drag those nulls down to the scratch pad here, and we'll start cleaning some data. So this is where the price equals null. Let's invert that, and now it's where the price does not equal null, or 137,000 records. So let's do a little bit of analysis uh, of this data. So if I click on Analytics and then Cross tab, we can ask ourselves a question, like what is the average price of wine for the top six varieties? So we've already got a clean uh, segment here of, of data that just has prices. Let's just look at the variety now and explore that, go to discrete values, and look at the top percentage. So if I want to say just the top six wines from Chardonnay down to uh, Sauvignon Blanc, I simply select those and drag those down into my scratch pad. All right, so now I'll create a new cross tab. And uh, in this cross tab, I can take uh, the variety as a row. Uh, I can take my filters, I'll bring where the price is uh, not equal to null and uh, where the variety is in the top six. So right away I can come to the right here and see Chardonnay is certainly by volume uh, our top wine. Now if I do something else like say price and all this time I'll take uh, price as our measure and do the medium or mean price here. And if I remove our totals, so now we see by price Bordeaux style uh, is clearly the winner. All right, so I can publish this. So uh, all the every uh, uh, analytics graphic I make here can be published as a report or as a data source. So we'll simply publish this as a report. And now once this is published, I can go back into my uh, BI reporting module, uh, click new dashboard, and I have the ability to insert reports here. So if I say insert a report, I'll browse for that report I just created, and we've got our 
average price of our top wines and click OK. So I can simply bring these in. I could drag in uh, as many of these as I like. Um, dashboards can be interactive as well. So if I pop over to a different dashboard, so in this case, I've got a um, the, the review sorted by region and we've got Brazil selected. I can do some additional selections, say we'll select this particular province of Brazil and all the other charts uh, change accordingly. So this is a look at um, dashboards with Open Text Magellan. Let's switch back over to the slides. So for the next step, we'll do some advanced analytics. All right, for part three, we'll stay in Magellan Data Discovery for some advanced analytics. And this time we'll ask ourselves, what type of wines score between 90 and 100 points? So to do that, we'll do a little bit of enrichment. We'll go to enrichment, engineering, and numeric ranges. And I've got a points field, but it's got every point individually, so I can group those together. So I'll create a new field called point buckets. And I'll group that by four groups. So I've got four new fields here, or four new uh, columns here, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, 90 to 95, and 95 to 100. So to look at that, I'll create a new cross tab. And in our, our new cross tab, I'll take my point buckets field as the rows. I'll pull my uh, not and all filters uh, down here, as well as my variety of uh, being in the top six. And then I'll use variety itself uh, for the column. So if I stand these up, very quickly at a glance, I can see on the left side, the low end, 80 to 85 and 85 to 90. Clearly Chardonnay is standing out as the winner in these fields. If I look on the right, the 90 to 95 and the 95 to 100, clearly Pinot Noir is standing out as the uh, stronger wine uh, scoring 90 or the higher points. All right, so let's look at price and um, uh, points together. So if I click on cross tab again. Okay, this time I'll bring in price for the rows and I'll change it to a scatter chart and I'll bring in points for our measure the mean of that and I'll remove the count so if I bring in my uh, price equals not null filter now I've got a nice distribution of data as my uh, points go up so does my price and they've got outliers on top so the outliers on top are uh, wines that are higher points for the same price point or better value and the, w the outliers on the bottom are uh, wines with the lower points for the same price point or uh, less value or extremely less value in, the, in some cases here alright so let's do some machine learning here and in order to do that we have to do a little bit of prep work and we've already got a field where the price is not equal to null I'll go ahead and remove this one I don't need. And let's have a look at our designation. So we explore designation. We know designation had some nulls. Look at the discrete values and pull down the null. And again, I'm going to invert that to where it's not equal to null. I'll do the same for country. So country had some nulls in there. So I'll grab that, explore it, look at the discrete values, pull down where our country is equal to null, and again, invert it so it's not equal to null. And finally, our negative sentiment. So we have in our uh, review or for each document, we have a negative tone score, or positive tone score. And we'll explore that. Look at the discrete values. And again, pull down where there are no nulls and invert it. All right, once I have my four filters here, I can use that to create a new table. So I'll go up to enrichment and then export and table. So I'll drag all four of my filters in. So I'll say where my negative tone um, not equal to null and where my country is not equal to null and where my designation is also not equal to null and finally where price is not equal to null. I can uh, create a new table here. So I'll, I'll make sure this goes into my wine data and I'll call this one wine data underscore clean. I can uh, choose the columns I want, so I'll grab everything from this table and everything from this table as well. So finally, I can export this as a new table. All right, so I've got a new table over here called Wine Data Clean, and I'll do a little feature engineering to look at this data as well. So if I go into Enrichment and then Engineering and then Expressions, I'm going to create a new expression here. So we'll drag my uh, Wine Data Clean table in here. I'll have a new expression ready for me. So I'm silly saying if the country is equal to US or country equals to Italy, Spain, Chile, or France, put them in their own columns or fields. These are the top five. Otherwise, put it in an other category. So I'll call this one top countries and click OK. 
All right, so right away I get a new field here called Top Countries, and it's only five columns, so Chile, France, Italy, other, Spain, and U.S. So we really still, there's still text fields, so I want to uh, create some Boolean out of this as well, um, so I can do some machine learning. So if I click on Analytics and then Advanced, I can click on Pre-Processing, and I can create a Boolean column. So very simple, I can say we're the top countries and click OK. And what happens is, behind the scenes, we create five new, or six new uh, fields here. So with the top countries equals Chile, simply yes or no, or zero or one. So we've done this multiple times. So if we go down to Wine Data with Features, we've done this for country, uh, we've done this uh, for province, and we've also done this for variety. All right, so we want to create some data sets as well. So let's clear out our uh, filters down here. We'll drag our clean data, or Wine Data with Features in here, into our scratch pad, and you want to select a sample. So if I select a sample, we'll say let's of these, let's take a random 75,000 and click OK. Now I can use the same field. I'll call this one, I'll rename this uh, for training data and click OK. And I can invert that by simply dragging it in, creating an invert of 15,000 and I'll rename this one test data. Click OK. So let's export this training data. And we're going to export this actually to the Spark Gateway into our wine data. And we'll simply call this training data set. Alright, I'll take the fields I want over here. So I'll bring all these uh, columns over and click export. All right, now once my data is over to Spark, I can start doing some machine learning models against it. So let's go back to our launch pad, and this time we're going to go in the Data Science Notebook. Okay, the Magellan Notebook is Jupyter Notebook based, which means I can write algorithms in PySpark, Scala, R, you know, Python, whatever I'm used to, as well as use other libraries I'm used to using as well. So we've got one here called Wine Scoring Model. Okay, we can create whatever model we want. In this case, our uh, data scientist has created a prediction uh, model. So we're predicting the wine quality or points based on the features that are passed in. So we start like anything, we'll load our data in from Spark. We'll get a quick preview of that and see there are 75,000 customer records. We'll create a machine learning pipeline in here uh, using um, MLLib. And uh, we're going to use, in this case, the random forest regression algorithm to, to create our prediction. So we'll store that machine learning pipeline so that we can save it uh, and use it later. And finally, we can explore and visualize these results in here to make sure that, uh, that we have indeed uh, the right data. So we'll take a, a copy of this uh, location of this model and save it. So this is where difference than most Jupyter Notebooks. We can go in here and select uh, a user. We'll give it a friendly name. We'll call this one Wine Quality Model. Uh, we'll give it a fancy description and paste our path in here. So we can choose the category as well. We know this particular one is not a grouping uh, algorithm, but it's a regression algorithm. And I could set a label and a degradation percentage uh, to warn if the model starts uh, becoming stale. So we're working with uh, test data here, but I can uh, leave that data frame open so I can pass that data in uh, on the other side, and we'll do that. And finally, I can publish that uh, and share it with myself or the entire work group. So once it's published, and it already is, in fact, let's go back to MailGel and Data Discovery and go down to our MLLib. And here we'll see all the available models to me. So I've got one here called Wine Quality Model. It's the first time I've run it, so um, it's telling me it's not, uh, it hasn't been tested for goodness. And I can pull some data in. So if I look at my wine data over here and go to my trainings, uh, wine data with features, any fields that it finds matching will automatically be uh, uh, matched here. And I can create a new table here. So I'll just call this one um, my new predictions. All right, I'll execute this, and what happens is we pass this entire data set back over to Spark, where it's run into the model and should return me both the data as well as my prediction. Okay, so if we have a look at our new table that was created here called New Predictions, we do have a new field here called Prediction, uh, and it's uh, predicting the price based on the quality, not the, not using any points. So it is only one or two points off of uh, the actual points. So we use them to comparis uh, for comparison as well. Uh, that has been a look at Open Text Magellan doing some data ingesting, natural language processing, uh, some modeling, some basic analytics, and finally some advanced analytics. Any questions? Uh, see us at www.opentext.com/magellan.